Hi everybody, welcome to another Roar Rocket tutorial. Uh, I'm Marcel and Ted is joining me today. We're going to talk a little bit about and show you how to use a brand new product that we've got, uh, our zigzag veneer. We're going to talk a little bit about why this came about. We're going to show you all the uh, tools and materials you might need to use. And we're going to go through a demo showing you how to put it all together. Uh, so let's, let's take it away. As Marcel mentioned, uh, we came up uh, with this new idea to alleviate a, a couple of problems. We can't uh, ship veneers that are longer than 47 inches. And so this allows us to sell this as a stack and, uh, and then you put it together on your own. If you're into making long boards like dancers like this, the veneer that uh, we sell uh, only comes 48 inches long, so uh, it's not near long enough to uh, allow us to make a board like this. Or it also allows us, because these uh, veneers have extra width, it allows us to make uh, boards like powder surfers that are much wider than uh, what this dancer would be. We will start by first joining together our material and then cutting it down to size. As you can see, these pieces currently match up, so to get them to fit together, we have to flip and mirror it, and then they will fit perfectly and make a nice straight edge. In order to attach these together, we need some paper towel, some water, and our strip of veneer tape. As you can see, the shiny side is the adhesive side, and the other side is rough, where there is no adhesive. To properly activate the adhesive of our veneer tape, it must be amply moistened. Here we will be using our wet paper towel applied to the shiny side where the adhesive is. And then we firmly press it down. A repeat on the other side and allow to dry for 2-3 to three minutes. And here it is after it has dried. As you can see, the veneer tape is running down the center of our zigzag. We have also similarly taped together our cross grain pieces. For detailed instructions on how to splice cross grain, please check out our how to splice cross grain tutorial. So now that we've got our veneer prepared, it's time to talk a little bit about the mold. Uh, what we've got here is a uh, bit of pink insulation foam. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about how to carve uh, and design one of these, uh, check out our written tutorial for it in our tutorial section at rawrocket.com. A couple of things you want to think about when you're, uh, after you've finished shaping your foam mold is you want to put a backer board on the back of it. Uh, this will help prevent the, the uh, foam from bending under the pressure while it uh, bends the veneer. What we don't want to do is to have glue uh, get onto the surface of the foam because it will uh, soak in and you'll not be able to separate it from your uh, from your veneers. <clears throat> and so uh, packing tape works really well as a separator okay, where you just put it along just like that over the entire surface and uh, you'll end up with a really uh, uh, nice separator so that uh, glues like Type Bond 3 or glues like epoxy won't stick to it. As you can see, our sheet of zigzag veneer is slightly too long for our mold so we will have to cut it down to size. You can use an X-Acto knife to score and cut veneers easily. And simply break it apart to separate. And here we have it. Uh, so we've got everything prepared. Uh, just before we do our lamination, I'd like to take a minute uh, with Ted to talk about the glue uh, we can use for our pressing. One of the problems we have with uh, pressing something this large, and if you look at the mold and the, the veneer, it's a lot of surface area. And uh, a glue like Type 1 3, which works really well for a smaller street deck or a longboard shape, um, the problem with this is that um, it only has a nine minute wet time. And that wet time doesn't allow you enough time to get all of the glue rolled onto the seven or eight layers that you want to press and get it into the bag. And so what we have to do is we have to go to a, a different type of glue. Uh, and in this case, West System Epoxy. Any quality epoxy will work as long as it's slow set. 
With the West system, it's the 105 uh, resin and 206 hardener, which is a slow set hardener. It gives you about two hours of working time uh, to get uh, the material rolled onto the veneer uh, and get it into the bag. So plenty of time to do that. The other thing that you want to be aware of is that when you're using this material, you want to use a roller and uh, you want a very even but fairly heavy coat of uh, epoxy uh, over the entire surface uh, uh, before you put them together. This epoxy is fairly thin and what I like to do is add a adhesive filler to it that allows you to thicken the material up. So instead of the epoxy soaking all the way into the veneer uh, and not leaving anything on the surface to bind the two layers together, what this material does is it thickens it up a tiny bit and it allows it to float on the surface. So when you put those two pieces together, there's something there to actually glue together. You don't have to add a lot to it. Uh, a couple of teaspoons will do. Whenever you use this, uh, you have to think about safety. Uh, always wear uh, some vinyl gloves uh, because this material is not good for you. You always want to use it also in a ventilated area because uh, even though it doesn't smell a lot, it's actually giving off fumes, especially when you've mixed the two materials together. Also remember that uh, when you mix this stuff up, uh, something this large will probably work not too bad. You probably don't want to do any more than 10 pumps of each to begin with. The problem with epoxy is that when it's in mass, uh, if I was going to do 20 or 30 pumps of it and mix it all up, and if it sits there for five or seven, eight minutes, uh, still in mass, what happens is it begins to heat. Even though the instructions say that it takes two hours for it to start to set, in mass it'll set much quicker. The material works great um, as long as you follow the instructions and get it down within a two hour limit. Great, so that's uh, everything about the epoxy, but we've got a quick tip for preserving your bag if you're going to work with epoxies. Um, if you get any of the epoxy on the inside of the bag, uh, where it meets the sealing tape strip or if you get some on the sealing tape strip itself uh, it will render the sealing tape strip um, sort of useless. You won't be able to properly bind it to the top side of the bag and keep your bag uh, airtight. That means leaks. So grab yourself some wax paper and cut a couple of lengths that match the width of your bag and you're going to insert about half of it into the bag and fold it over each of the sides. You use a piece of tape to affix it in place so it doesn't go anywhere. This protects both sides so you can insert your project, take it out uh, with no risk to damaging your bag. Uh, it means you can keep using your bag and it'll hold the seal for a lot longer. Um, this can be used for Type Bond 3 as well. So uh, I think we're ready. Let's laminate that board. First we have to correctly order our pieces. Here we are using seven layers. We have offset all of the splicing from each other. This prevents weak points from within the board caused by stacking the splices. We've got our one cross grain piece in the middle of our stack. Okay, so we've got everything all set up for our lamination. Uh, our veneer is all pieced together. We've got it stacked in the correct order. Uh, we've, our mold is prepared and we are going to do a tight bond glue up for this one. Uh, we are using a thin napped paint roller because there's going to be so much glue required for this we don't want a lot of uh, waste or excess uh, and because we are doing a tight bond glue up we've got about nine minutes to do all of this in so we're using an eight inch paint roller versus the three inch ones that we sell uh, just to speed things up. So uh, with that I think uh, we're about ready to go. Sounds good to me. Let's take it away. Here we are eight hours later. The glue is all dry and we're ready to remove it from the bag. 
great tip for opening your sealing tape is to use a sharpie to help open the bag. Don't forget to replace the sticker backing onto your sealing tape to ensure it stays fresh and clean. And as you pull your pressing out of the bag, be sure to watch out for sharp corners that could puncture the vinyl. Always be sure to fold up your bag immediately after removing your pressing and storing it away in order to keep it healthy and happy. Alright, so we've got ourselves a finished board. Uh, hopefully by now you guys know how to uh, assemble your zigzag veneer and how to get it all laminated together into a board. Uh, we've got a shape ready that we're going to chop out for next time. Doesn't look like much right now, but uh, we're pretty excited to see how it turns out. A uh, powder server is not the only application for the zigzag veneer. You know, we've made ourselves a dancer longboard. Uh, you can do wake skates, um, skis, any kind of large format project that uh, our previous veneer was uh, unable to help you with. If you'd like to learn more about this stuff, uh, visit our website at rawrocket.com. Uh, you can check out any of the links below. Uh, I'm Marcel, uh, this is Ted, and uh, thank you guys for joining us uh, for another Raw Rocket tutorial video. We'll see you next time.